why you're here. Just give us your name and tell us one sentence why you're here. I'm honored. I'm with the Boy Scouts. I'm here to. Once for a merit badge, we're working on communication. We're just here. We have to come to a board meeting to see how it's run, what happens in one. Thank you. And Connor, what town are you from? East Montpelier. I'm, I'm Daniel, and I'm here for the same reason. And what town are you from? East Montpelier. I'm Arthur, I'm here for the same reason, and I'm from East Montpelier. I'm Donovan, I'm here for the same reason, and I'm from East Montpelier. And are all you guys at U32? Yes. Yeah? Well, welcome. We're really glad to have you here. You. And I hope you can get the part of your badge that you need from this meeting. <laughs> And we're trying to keep you away. Yeah. And are you guys chaperoning them? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm the parent to the two of them. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming. It's nice to have you. Um, agenda revisions? Yes. Mm. Uh, we have one. Uh, the you eat, I'll talk. The qualifications uh, process for pre qualifying the construction folks have gone faster than we thought. So we have five firms for you to approve. Instead of January, we can do it now, and it can actually speed up the process to get to the end. We so that would, that would be an action agenda. Yeah, we had set the date for yesterday, but we were not sure we would be able to follow through on all of the uh, reference, reference checks days. and all that, but we were good for the companies that okay. submitted. We didn't have to be Okay, able to so we'll add that to the action agenda. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to hold off on public comments because I want to do this community forum mm -hmm. and then we can go back to that. So Kari and Scott have put together a presentation of the budget. Great. Um, and Kari. I'm going to I'm going to move because I am in the way. All right, well, hey, thanks everybody for coming. I uh, appreciate you taking the time on a dark December night and um, um, we're going to just go through, Scott and I, some of the background, and then we'll present some of uh, the detail, um, but at a fairly high level, about, about the, this year's draft budget. We're working on um, version three right now, and um, then there'll be time for some comments. Okay? So, take the next slide, please. Yep. The, um, the, um, so yeah, so this is our this is our agenda, and uh, we will go through the process, a little bit about our mission and performance, and then talk about some trends. Okay, let's let's keep rolling. All right, so first thing I want to start with is this is a different kind of year because of the Act 46 and the State Board's decision to make our union become a unified union district, a single a single entity. Um, so I wanted to lay out a little bit of the timeline here, so just for your information to kind of put this in context. Um, some of this is fluid, so don't, don't hold me to these dates, but um, we're working with the best information we have right now. Uh, January 9th, uh, we're planning to have a public hearing of the draft Articles of Association, which would be the bylaws for the new unit. So I invite you to come to that. Um, there'll, be, there'll be more information about where and when, but January 9th is then. Um, then we will be having the first organizational meeting on January 14th. That will be in the evening in, in the auditorium here, correct? Um, that's where we start establishing the rules for the, how the new um, union uh, will, will operate. And that will be followed by the first meeting of the transition board. So there's a, some different layers that are going on here. But each, each of the um, schools is going to appoint a couple people to this transition board to sort of navigate as we go forward. Then on January 28th, that's the anticipated due date for candidates for the next round of school board elections. It's a little confusing. We're going to be electing this new unified board for folks who want to serve on that, um, anticipating two from each town, two members from each town. But we will also be electing where we need to uh, folks to populate the current six different boards that we have as part of our supervisory union so that these boards can continue their work and finish out the school year and the audit after that. Um, then on February 19th, we're anticipating that we'll vote on the Articles of Association as a, as a um, uh, unified district that all five towns will vote to adopt bylaws. 
And then on March 5th, town meeting day, we'll be electing the school boards. And then we're anticipating that on April 30th, we'll actually be voting on a budget, um, of which the U32 budget will be a component, right? So we're instead of voting on six different budgets, the idea is that it will be have one single merged budget. Okay, next slide, please. And so this slide um, shows sort of the process that we're using to develop the U32 budget. We start with input from the staff, goes through various scenarios with um, feedback from the school board, and it goes around as many times as necessary. As I mentioned, we're on stage on step three, um, or, or, or version three, and now we're taking some community comments. We could revise, I'm not sure how many more times. But what's different is that the U U32 board is not going to be recommending this, this budget to the electorate to pass on town meeting day, as we traditionally would do. We're going to be passing along our work to, to the, um, the new board okay, that's elected on, on, um, on town meeting day. And it'll be up to them to recommend whatever they want. We think that they'll benefit from the work that we're doing now. Um, and then ultimately, as always, the, vote, the voters will approve or not. Okay, any questions about Act 46 and this whole timeline and process, big picture? Mike? I don't know if this is the right time or not. Just the process. Well, yeah, I think it is because we're going to move into other things. I'll, I'll try to be brief. Thank, thank you. Um, I, I, I'm just concerned with the information that's been put out unofficially on front porch forum about two things, and one came from Bill and one came from Kari, that um, th that the transition board is going to, um, or, or, or the initial board is go is going to um, have a date by which. Uh, people are going to be elected on town meeting day. And under the article, I, and, and I just don't know when that was decision was made and by whom, because that decision doesn't get made until the transition board is sworn in and gets their authority. So it might be a good idea, it might be a perfect idea to have that election on town meeting day. But who, who made that decision and, and when? Because there's no authority right now for that decision to be made. That, that's the first question. Okay. The second question that I have, and, and, I, and I'd like an answer to that question, if I could kindly, please. The second question is, is the petitions having be, to be due on January 28th. Now, that was put out that these petitions will, will be due on January 28th. But if the electorate decides at the organizational meeting to elect the new members to the new board, the initial members and the new board, by, by, not by Australian ballot, by on the floor, there will be no petitions due for the, for the new school board. That, that, that the nomination and voting on those new members will take place at a meeting with, without petition. So I'm just concerned, and, and, and this is the concern that me and a number of people have had, that these decisions are being made outside of the governance structure. Hmm. That there's no authority, with all due respect, to be setting those timelines until the transition board meets. And again, it might be a terrific idea to have the election, even if it's not by Australian ballot, on town meeting day. But there's no authority for anyone right now to make that decision. So I, I'd like to know okay. who made that decision well, I'll, and, I'll when, try and, when, and when it was made. I'll try to respond. And I'm not trying to be a crank about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I no, I, no, no, because I think, I think you're right. I think that I'm overstating it in that this is really the anticipated timeline, and it really will be up to the uh, transition board to establish, um, well, yes, as you point out, we're going to have to decide how decisions get made um, in, our, in our new union, but also then what, what is the timeline. I think that the, gr the group of people that's been working on this sees how tight things are um, to, to you know, move through these various steps and has identified these as the most likely dates, but I, they're not set in stone, I think you're right. And, and yeah, is that accurate, Bill? Yeah, it's very accurate. I mean, I, I know I've, been, I've put it out there, you're right, Michael, I have. Um, and, um, you know, I'm trying to put out draft timelines right now, maybe I should put more draft, draft, draft on it than I do put on it, but um, it, it's, you know, it's understanding the, the tightness of all this and how tight the transition board has for turning things around. So, so that's a really good point. I think that yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll sort of reframe this as we talk about it. Yeah, because, because, I mean, I, 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 I overread these things as, um, 
and, and we'll see what a court has to say about whether they're even valid. But right yeah. now, but right yeah. now they are valid. They're presumptively right. valid. Right. Right. But it sounds like it's fait accompli. So, and, and, yeah, I agree with you. The other thing that I learned on Monday that the draft articles that we have that are handed to us by, until those are changed, those are the ones I follow. Ab absolutely, and, and when one reads those, yeah. It has to be decided by the electorate whether or not there's going to be petitions or Australian ballot. And people may decide, let's go with Australian ballot, and that's fine. And, P and the initial board may decide, or transitional board, excuse me, let's go with town meeting. Might be a great decision, but we got to have some kind of governance authority. And again, without overstating it, when you in front porch forums, not a legal posting, but it says this will take place. This will take place. Yeah. Maybe Appreciate it will. That. Maybe it won't. So. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to... Okay. Any other questions about the process? And we're going to get into other topics. All right. Next slide, please. So we're going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, whether we are a supervisory union or a unified district. We have a mission, and the mission uh, currently is that we exist to nurture and inspire in all students the passion, creativity, and power to contribute to their local um, um, and global communities, okay? And then there's a follow-up to this that gets into more specifics on the next slide. It talks about, we want students to have core knowledge of essential academic subjects like literacy and math. We also want students to be proficient in things, uh, transferable skills like problem solving and communication. So we're, we're, we're trying to do a lot here. And really the budget, the big point here is the budget is just a tool. <coughs> Um, like a lot of different things to try to accomplish this mission. It's all in service of this. So next step, how are we doing in terms of accomplishment of this mission? Well, we've been starting to um, get reports and data that's more specific about that. So I'm just gonna share with you a little bit. Um, so this slide shows um, the level of proficiency, and this is across the supervisory union, so it includes the elementary schools as well. And we're talking about proficiency. In, uh, in literacy specifically. We've got three different um, uh, w ways of assessing. One is report card data, so very internal to us. One is a local assessment that's um, done using an objective analysis. Uh, and then the third one is the SBACs, which is, is an external test, all right? So um, using those three different types of assessment, we see that we're somewhere between 55% of students proficient and 70% somewhere in the range of 60, 62%, something like that. Not where we want it, um, uh, but that's what it is in terms of literacy uh, as of uh, last end of the last school year. Next slide, please. This shows the same, um, same um, analysis for math, and here it's a little bit different. We've got report card data is up close to 58%, but the local assessment and the, and the SBAC, the proficiency rate is more like 40%. So um, in our discussions that we've had, and again, this is across the SU, uh, this is not where we want things to be. We, want, we need to see improvement, um, and, uh, and we're just not satisfied with this. Next slide, please. Um, this slide, I just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight into um, some of the challenge that the SU faces. What this does is breaks out the SBAC, that's that external testing for math in the sixth grade, and it shows on the left, students on the far left, students that are on free and reduced lunch, are, uh, and their average score is, is the yellow line across, and then students that are not on the free and reduced lunch. And the difference there is, if I remember correctly, about a year's worth of learning in math in the sixth grade, okay? On the right-hand side, we've got um, students that have an, in, an individualized education plan and those that don't have an individualized education. And here, if I remember correctly, the difference is more like two and a half years of learning. So significant differences in these, in these populations, subpopulations. And this is part of the challenge for the SU, and it's a big challenge for, for U32 specifically, because these are sixth graders that are coming in, uh, and it's not necessarily a level playing field, so to speak. Okay, just wanted to share that, and then we do have a plan. We're midway through a five-year strategic plan. It lay, lays out just the headlines here. Three key objectives, we're, we're establishing clear learning targets. What is it we actually want students to learn? Uh, then having good assessment systems, and of course, high quality instruction, and then interventions where students need, need additional help. 
And the next slide is, oh, and I just wanted to share, we have a very specific learning goal that speaks to math. And um, just to give you the highlight for U32, at the beginning, and this goal was established by the staff, by, by math teachers. At the beginning of the year, in September, we had uh, roughly 46% of students proficient at their grade level. We want to end the year at 74%. So we feel that's a fairly ambitious goal. We want to be moving the bar um, up quite a bit and, and really accelerating that amount of learning. It's not 100%. It's not, it's not where we necessarily want it to be long term, but we're working towards that. So I think that's the last slide that I have. I'm going to turn it over to Scott to talk about some of the big picture. Yes, this is just a, an interlude, and um, ordinarily I would ad lib, but um, I could talk about this stuff forever, which would, I think, um, Kai Well, I enjoy that. <laughs> That's very kind. So I'm disciplining myself by actually trying to stick to a script. So anyway, um, I think many of us who have been around for a while would agree that we live in, in strange and discordant times where on one hand, we have a strong sense of the harshness and difficulty of everyday life, but on the other hand, we have an equally strong and even mythic sense of optimism about the future, um, as you can sort of see that contrast here. And on stage 16, I don't know if any of you gentlemen are doing stage 16. I'm helping out on tech. You're helping out on tech? Yes. Yeah? So um, it's Annie, right? Yes. So have you heard the song, The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. So that is, uh, I'm sure you've heard it probably yeah, uh, <laughs> hundreds of times. Um, so anyway, uh, that is so classically a part of our thinking. Um, and for the next one, Bill, please. But for all too many people, the sun won't come out tomorrow. In fact, won't come out ever. Um, life expectancy nationwide is down last year, with way too much of that decrease due to suicides. Um, the expression, deaths of despair, came up in this middle uh, first entered the lexicon in this middle piece, the um, famous paper by Anne Case and Agus Deaton from 2015. Um, this, uh, at the time, struck like a thunderbolt. And <clears throat> the, uh, the, the expression, dust of despair, has been with us ever since. Next, please. Um, you can get a sense of just how widespread this epidemic of despair is and how generally it has worsened in the 11 years from 2005 to 2016. So it's almost as though we dodged an economic depression in 2008 only to fall victim to a social and emotional Great Depression. Next, please. So while more people in their prime adult years are, are suffering untimely deaths. At the same time, and especially in Vermont, fewer children, children are getting brought into the world. We've, Vermont has actually been at or near the bottom of these rankings for the better part of an entire generation. <clears throat> and um, can anybody guess within Vermont, the state with the lowest fertility rate in the country in 2016, what county do you think had the lowest fertility rate? Washington? Washington, believe it or not, yeah, Washington. So this may be what the class of 20, graduating class of 2034 looks like. Let's hope not. Next, please. <coughs> So on this, this is from the Case Deaton paper. And I just want to pause for a moment on this because it's a kind of counterpart to what Kari was showing you on the achievement gap in um, math between different populations in the school. Um, this is uh, what I hope is the closest thing to a scream for help 
that I ever see on a statistical table. Basically what's happening is that white, non-Hispanic males um, with a high school education or less, born between 1959 and 1968, have been dying at heavier, very heavy rates compared to their older cohort, born between 1945 and 1954. And much of this is happening through various forms of self-destruction. If you look from cirrhosis, alcoholism, car wrecks, intentional self-harm, which is basically suicides, all of these are, are positive. Poisonings, that's mainly drug overdoses. Um, and external causes, basically stuff that happens to you from the outside, not from getting sick. And where in most other categories, including uh, a huge improvement in black non-Hispanics and Hispanics, the, the one absolute anomaly here is, that, um, is the circle area. And later work has also reinforced that most of this is happening, most of these, um, of these excess deaths are happening in rural areas. So these are our people who are really hurting. <clears throat> our predecessors who oversee high schools back between 1973 and 1986 we're worried about the achievement, their own version of the achievement gap at the time. But perhaps they, well, how could they have known? But um, they ought to have been worried about the survival gap between, um, between these different cohorts 30 years on. So our high schools then apparently failed to equip these students with the intellectual, intellectual and emotional resources to adapt and stay alive. So maybe we should also, amongst everything else, be asking ourselves, how are we doing at uh, equipping our students with these, um, with these skills, with these resources? So um, next, please. Uh, this may actually seem like sort of a, a duh kind of statement. Um, that many of the same factors that are driving too many people to early graves um, are also keeping them from having as many children as they might wish to. And then that those children who do get born are, have to grow up uh, facing into those same stiff, adverse headwinds. So really, it's it's no wonder that special education costs are the fastest growing component of our, of our education expenses. Um, and this is something that um, I unfortunately expect is going to continue. Next, please. This slide is just to frame our request and what is happening in Vermont. These are trends indexed to the year 2006, which is the first um, year where we can really get consistent apples to apples comparisons on state education property tax. You can see that even though it's more volatile because it's smaller, um, it essentially tracks total Vermont wages and salaries as a share of Vermont gross, the, the Vermont economy. But you can see that the Vermont wages and salaries are stagnating. Meanwhile, I mean, this may not be a surprise based on what I was just talking about, but personal spending on health care in Vermont as a share of the Vermont economy has gone up substantially. If it's plateauing, that's a good thing. We don't know. And last slide, please. Now, this one is, um, is an even bigger picture slide, indexed to 1954. The red line is like the red line on the previous slide. Total wages and salaries for the US as a whole. The blue line is corporate profits for the US as a whole. Um, again, these are, um, these are adjusted for inflation. 
what you generally see up until around the year 2000 is that corporate profits and wages and salaries are generally you know, more or less together. Um, you can't see the recessions, the recession bars on this um, chart, but their corporate profits tend to be more volatile <coughs> anyway. But where you see after 2000, they get really volatile, and there's a big jump right before the big plunge in um, the recession after 2008. But since then, they have just come completely decoupled from the uh, wages and salaries, which, um, based on what we saw before, uh, I think may not be a great sign of um, that we might not be facing serious economic ups and, well, serious economic downs since at the moment where uh, we've been for, for years on and up. So, um, however, uh, because the sun always does come out tomorrow, Kari will bring us back to a joyous <laughs> well, I have to put the happy ending on the story. So, uh, the one thing I would say about, in terms, I was hoping for a happy ending, is that I think that, that we view, and a lot of people in the community view, the schools as a big part of the solution to these challenges. Mm -hmm. So, bringing it back to our particular scenario, next slide please. This is the long-term enrollment trend at the U32. A couple different ways of calculating it, the average daily membership, and then the actual total enrollment. They're calculated different, there's actually a third way of calculating enrollment, but the, the point is that it's trending down, and I think it's roughly about a percent a year. And we have there evidence to suggest that that might accelerate, it might be trending, and of course it just makes it more and more challenging to offer the programs that we currently we currently do in this type of environment. All right, we're going to move into um, how how do you, how does the budget fit into um, the tax rate? Many of you have probably seen this before, but our school expense budget is just one component. We have the state education fund. So what what the legislature actually ends up doing to support us is won't be we won't actually know until the spring. We have equalized people, people count, I was referring to the other, the other method of calculating how many students we actually have in the school. Um, the school expense budgets, this school, the, the five others will be a component of that final budget. And then there's the common level of appraisal, which is the way of um, um, assessing tax rates, and, or appraisal rates in different towns, property, property values. And then this slide shows um, Basically, on the on the left is expenses, of just a pie chart breakdown of different expense categories. On the right is revenues. You can see ed education spending revenue is the vast majority of that. Um, and on the left, it's you can't see all the different components, but um, roughly what seventy percent or so is personnel costs. Is that uh, seventy to seventy-five percent is personnel, and one of the things. Sorry, I forgot to just remind you of it. When you see the WCSU assessment so large, there's special education within that because yeah. that had to move to the supervisory union. Right, so right. Special education looks really small uh, down that second orange piece, but yeah, there's here. a local component that's within the school, and then and there's then, the component that yeah. has to flow through the supervisory and then, union. Did we have a handout? Did that get out? Uh, it's it's on the table. I think okay. Handed out. So if anybody needs handouts, especially the part we're going to go over next. But just to give you a sense of the breakout. And then the next slide is going to really summarize the headlines from um, draft budget number three. So we're, we usually do comparison to last year's budget. The biggest component all, always is compensation for our staff, that's teachers and support staff and administrators. Um, just based on where we are now, and most of that's pre-negotiated in, in labor contracts, we're looking at an increase of over last year of two, 0.2%. Um, we're going to make it. We're planning on making some adjustment for that by um, staffing changes, not on the um, teacher level, but in terms of uh, support staff that will bring that down somewhat. And then we have some non-salary adjustments um, that will increase the budget over last year. One of them, as I recall, was a, a pretty significant increase in in um, the tuition for uh, students that go over to the tech center in in Barry. And there was another one, the special education assessments for the for the SU was the other big ones. 
Um, when we have um, um, reductions, um, well, we have we have reductions in revenue that offset, but the bottom line is bringing us to about three percent. That even though it shows as a negative there, Kari, that's actually an increase in revenues. Oh, okay. It decreases the impact on the tax rate. That's why it's a negative there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's so that so total all this up, and we're at a um, projected impact uh, net tax impact of, of just under three percent, which was. The target that uh, the direction that the U32 board gave to the administrators. So right now, they pr they, we are working with a budget that satisfied our original ask. And so from this, we're going to move into the uh, discussion part. And the questions I have for you are: What questions do you have for us? What's your reaction to the information that we've given you? And specifically, I'd love to hear from you if you have an opinion at this at this stage. Are we doing a good job of properly balancing the impacts on the students, the schools, and the taxpayers? That's really the, the, the balancing act that we're trying to achieve here. And we'll open it up. The 3% impact on the tax rate, what does that take into consideration, for example, to consider increases in the grant list? Or is it based on a previous grant list? No, this is just on the, the school budget. Yeah, that's the increase to the school budget, that 2.98%. Oh, okay. How it impacts taxes is a completely so different what, calculation. Wasn't it presented, though, as yeah, a so tax it, impact? Yeah, and on tax impacts, so that assumes last year's CLA, 2017. We don't get this year's CLA until December 31st. Any predictions on how the CLA may change? I think it will probably go down in most towns because property values have been going up. And what impact will that have? That will increase the impact on More than 3%. Yeah. Okay. That was my question. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions or, or comments? Um, just uh, about equalized pupils. Are there, uh, the, this is, um, is there any prediction? So these aren't official numbers of equalized pupils. Um, as we told you last time, we're still estimating the agency of education is behind on their statutory requirements to get us uh, actual figures. So they're the best that we can estimate at this point. We know we're losing as equalized pupils across the system and within U32. Our, our number of pupils is going down. In some places, it's very drastic. Um, it just occurred to me, Bill. Would you like to explain to <laughs> you? <laughs> you want me to go into an hour <laughs> no. piece of equal, no, equalized pupils is a way of taking all the pupils. And if let's say there's 75,000 pupils in the state of Vermont, there's weighting factors based on poverty, based on if you're a high school student, elementary student, English language learner, student <coughs> that needs special education services, and there's factors given to you, given to that individual student. That's all totaled up. And the idea is that at the end, they want the number of equalized pupils to equal the actual number of enrolled pupils. So there's different factors and percentages put on those different, or weights, as it were. That's probably my shortest equalized pupils I've ever done. That's great, yeah. <laughs> but it's factors but, based on student needs. But it's also correlated with the population, the student population that's trending down. Yeah, and we're trending down. We're trending down around the state. Uh, Washington Central is going down faster than the state right now. And we have been for several years. Any, Michael? I, I want, um, it's a little attenuated. Um, it has to do with Washington Central Supervisory Union budget, which is part of the U32 budget, and that it's embedded in it. And this is from the last meeting. Um, that there's a salary increase in staffing change of $110,867 for the uh, uh, supervisory union budget. Can anyone explain what that is? Because in, in parentheses it says no new positions, but it's $110,000. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have that, I don't believe. Is that, were you, were you looking at last week, last month? I'm looking at uh, January, excuse me, December 5th, 2018, uh, full board meeting budget with uh, supervisory union. The budget that was approved by the full yeah, board. And yeah, and which is, uh, you know, I know it's, it's, embed, it's embedded within there was no opportunity at that meeting for a question that I was aware of. It's embedded okay. in this budget. I'm just wondering if anyone here, maybe someone on the executive committee, Bill, or someone can, can uh, articulate what that is. Can I see it? Sure. sure. I, I don't have my materials with me, so oh, I'm okay. doing it from memory. Hey. So I'm not going to say I'm going to be accurate. You've got a good time. So. 
Yeah, like, yeah thanks. It, it's out. It's out when that one there, sir. Without these. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Okay, so what that is is that so we central office this budget for Washington Central includes all the special educators, all the SLPs, all the um, associated services with special education. So we're not just the 13 people. There's about 60 to 75 personnel that are now in the Washington Central budget. So that's the annual increase for that number of personnel. Okay. So that I mean that's that's assuming. Um, we're assuming some things because we're in a negotiation year for next year. And, and generally increases for this staff, well, some of it is negotiated, right? And some of it's some not. Of it's not and then, some, right now we're at the point because we're in a negotiation year for next year. Um, we took assumptions based as we always do when I talk with the negotiation committee. We try to keep that somewhat quiet because we're trying to, we're in negotiations. Um, but we know with the health care increase, right now health care is increasing almost 12% across the board for all personnel. And then, so that, that we know in there. And that that's in that line also. That's in that, no, it's in a different line. He has, he has, the line, he has a health care benefits change in right below, below, it. below it. So it's actually, that 12% is actually a 3% increase for all our, on all our HR costs. I mean, about 30% of a position for a teacher is benefits for a paraeducator it's about 50% of their total cost. Yeah. I, I think just as a comparison our budget has a $242,000 increase for that same line. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, but that I mean it's it, it just it was a parenthesis to say that you know we're not adding staff. Yeah. Any uh, other questions or comments before we wrap it up here? I have a couple more slides just to um, Remind ourselves of the next steps, and uh, again, this is some of these dates are draft. I <laughs> don't want to make assumptions about what's actually going to happen, but this is what, uh, what we're anticipating um, is a likely scenario. Um, the school boards are, are going to recommend budgets. We're following this process. It'll be up to the next board to do um, as it chooses. Um, we are anticipating a public hearing on January 9th to look at the new. Uh, articles of association, uh, the draft ones, and then on the 14th uh, we have a first organizational meeting and transition board meeting, and then in depending on how that goes, um, well the, the transition board will be um, rolling up these various budgets into one. Um, in February 19th we're anticipating a vote on the articles of association. March 5th is town meeting day. We'll elect the school boards. And if, if, if things go according to this um, um, uh, program, then we would end up with a vote somewhere around April 30th on the entire budget. Um, and then sometime in the spring, after all of that's happened, as, as normally, um, the norm, normal order of events, the legislature weighs in, they have the final say, and actually determine the, the amount of money that schools get. So, and then the last slide is just, um, if you have additional questions, feel free to contact any of us. We'll do our best to answer, um, and, and, and if you have any um, uh, comments that you'd like us to, to take in. Yes, please. You know, I, I just, I'm a little confused about what the middle slides had to do with the budget. Um, you know, one of the things I see a lot is the number of students leaving the state after they graduate high school, and then they don't come back into the state, and that wasn't mentioned. I didn't really see a connection of the mortality rate and what you guys are doing budget-wise to, I just didn't, that just seems sort of not connected with yeah. the budget in any way. So I'm not sure where you're going with that. I know if I was sitting in town meeting and you guys came up with that, I would sort of wonder where, where your minds are really going yeah. with that. Fair enough. Yeah, I agree. It's because, it's my fault. <laughs> um, that was, um, Kari is humoring me. And um, oh, okay. this is this well, is sort of don't even worry too long because that might turn off voters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, um, yeah, it's just but a I, very disconnect right there. I, yeah, I think it was the disconnect is more. Um, it's Scott, can you connect it for her? Uh, yeah. Um, Would that help? Well, yeah. I mean, like go I ahead and connect. I it. thought that was going to go somewhere where you guys were going to be offering programs that directly tied in with the budget, like. You know, we're offering programs for students for um, 
hopefully not having babies very mm. soon, but maybe staying in Vermont and having your babies, you know. But I just didn't, yeah, I just. <clears throat> yeah, um, at this point, what we're, it's essentially just trying to make sure that when we talk about the budget, we're not talking about it in isolation from the real world that people live in. And <clears throat> the, what is happening, I mean, a lot of that was sort of background to explaining why it is that special education expenses are naturally growing disproportionately fast compared to other, um, other kinds of educational spending. Um, and underscoring the importance of that, the, serious of, the seriousness of the situation that's, that's out there in the world um, among you know, our people who are sending their children to school so that you know, we're just aware of this and building that awareness into the, the dry numbers that, that get um, compiled into what we actually wind up doing as an organization next year. That, um, but I, I, I hear you loud and clear, as if I know. If you had started with that, if you had went into, this is what, I'm look this is what we're looking at, this is the reason why special education are, is going up. I think that you. I think there's more expounding on that, like building on curricular activities, which help for with mental health and all of that. You know, humanities is also a big thing. I just, yeah, I was just a little disconnected. But if you had yeah. started with that and said this is, yeah, yeah, um, I can get well, that. Well, I, I, you're right, and I think what I look well. I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen next year at this time? But if by some chance, if by some, from my perspective, happy chance, um, I'm, Kari and I are, are you know, in a position to be doing this again, um, I would enjoy very much you know, sort of doing yeah. something more. Yeah, no, I appreciate the feedback. We, yeah. can, we can do better with that. If I were going to summarize it, I would say the challenges that the society faces are immense. The school is in, a, in an environment where we're trying to preserve programs, and, and yet we're also trying to raise the bar in terms of um, student learning and proficiency because it's so important to address those immense challenges in society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so while um, we would love to do more with the budget, we feel like we are doing what we can to wring out as much learning from the dollars as, as we can. Thank All right, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. <coughs> we want to finish the budget discussion then? Yeah. Right. So you're the chair. You guys want to just finish the budget discussion um, sure. while we're right here? Let's not forget the minutes. So. No, I'll go. Oh, let's do those first. Thank you. So, motion to approve the minutes of December 5th. So moved. Scott, second. and a second. Okay. George, any um, comments or changes? I have one. So, item 3.1 on the second page. Says, uh, Kari Bradley asked whether the proposed cuts in the budget draft have a negative impact on students. And that's a little bit rotted to um, student, student learning outcomes. <laughs> Anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. We've done that. I'm going to start checking these things off here so we do this. Um, so let's look at the budget. And do people have questions for Stephen and Bill? Or are you comfortable with draft three? Or do you want more information? Do you guys want to say anything about draft three as opposed to draft two? 
So I can give good news as to how we got to that number, which was um, the, the Career Center actually reduced their tuition a little bit. Um, so that saved us around $16,000, yeah. Um, but we also went through, with a very fine tooth comb, through, our, um, through some of the insurance to see, had we coded people correctly, were there people that could be on a different plan and save them money, which in turn would save us money, um, and so we were able to find some savings through that as well, and just make sure that people, you know, if nothing else, it gave us a chance to, I, we really just went through person by person um, and said, are we sure that they're paying into the right um, program? Because, for example, we found one person who was on the family plan, but it was a parent with two children, and that's actually a different lower cost plan, which saved them money. Saves us money as well, but so, but we were able to talk to them and say, hey, hey, guess what? And nobody seems to be bothered by that, which is good. Um, so there were things like that that we were able to find which helped us really come back into line um, with this to get it to, the, to where it was. So it, we really these were more technical issues than anything else, um, but it's pretty much the same scenario from draft two to draft three with just some changes within those um, those small areas. But it got it under three. You did. Which was, I heard very clearly, 2.98. <laughs> he went even further. That's <laughs> good. And I just had one question. I was looking, I hope I didn't ask it last time. Um, under other staffing changes, academic program changes. Yes. What is that? So that primarily falls within the, the line that special education programs. Oh, okay. And remember, our special education expenses are both in our budget and in our assessments to the supervisory union, and those are those are listed as such. Um, so. Um, but that's not personnel. Yes, it is. In addition to up two lines up above, is also personnel, right? Yep. Those are ones that weren't seen in this year's budget, and we do a budget to budget comparison. Okay, and then this oh, bottom line. I see line, what you're asking, yes. And then the bottom line are additional cuts that you're going to make this about. year that we talked yeah. about. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Thanks. Any other questions? Thanks, good. I think given our role in this budgeting process, this is. Yep. And so, um, I'm just looking at our motions here. Do we even need you to? We don't need a motion. It's going on to the transition board. Okay, yeah. so we don't have to say anything. Yeah. Um, although, just uh, because this whole thing just has me kind of um, sunk into confusion, um, what if what if the lawsuit? puts a stop to things. Do we revisit this? He or? will, but we are at the point, we're already past the point where we cannot have a vote. If there were an injunction even tomorrow, mm -hmm. that we could have be ready for a town meeting vote on the 5th of March. We'd have to have a special election for your budget. We have already changed at central office. So we cannot, we're not on the timeline for a town meeting budget vote at this point. I've been telling it to all boards. Yeah. I said, and we will end up having a special meeting. To regardless. A special regardless, vote. Regardless which, which yeah. way the governance system is. We're, we're that, once we go off our track and we're that tight. Right. Is that because of the work you have to do or because, yeah, because of the because warnings? Of, it's because of the warnings and the work we have to do. Basically, January 10th, we have to have everything ready to go into town reports. Town reports. Uh, I think we have a letter later section yeah, on this. Yes, three, four, and three, five. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about that and at forty-six about how reporting will be changing this year right away to our communities. So, is there an estimated point at which? Um, so, Scott, I, I'm just going to be. I, I am in the point where I'm working day to day right now. And I totally as understand. Michael said. You know, and he was right to point it out, like they should be saying draft timelines all over and who has the authority. Um, 
I am trying not to make estimates for things that I don't know, that I'm not required to do as a superintendent in the following what I'm told by AOE. Okay. It's not that I, I won't do it, it's just that in the amount of work that has to be done. At the same time, I would let you know that not only are we creating budgets, but we have to input a, two new software platforms for fiscal software, one new platform for fiscal software as long as, as well as keep our old one going for next fiscal year, and that has to be operational by July 1, and a whole new accounting coding system that Lori's done once and has to redo because the code coding system was not solid from the state of Vermont, they changed it. So this is a three-level whammy on the fiscal department, and um, I was accused of and guilty of I'm protecting our fiscal department, so I don't ask them to do anything they don't have to do right now. Mm -hmm. um, is all this doable? I mean, it's not really a question of whether it's doable. We have to do it. Mm -hmm. It's required. Why? Well, I have to move resources. Okay. To do it. If I have to move resources, I will do it. So, and that's just where we're at. So I, I, if if that's why I'm not trying to think about what ifs. So I think our budget discussion is done, unless something That's happens. what I was going to say later on, is that I'm not planning on any more budget yep. discussions. Okay. okay. Should we not, you know, take some kind of formal action to say we recommend this? I don't know. That's what I just asked. It's up to you if you'd like to. I'd like to. I'd like to. Say, yeah. It's not coming from Bill, it's coming from us. Yep. So does someone want to make, you want to make a motion? motion do you want to do that? Um, yeah, it's not really an action so much as, but I guess we could say that we rec, we recommend, we These recommend are, this draft budget uh, for the consideration of the, of the transition. The, the transition. To, <laughs> to support the education at U32 or something. Is there a second to that? Did you get that, Lisa? Say. You want to read it back? To support the education. Of, of I don't know. To, to, I just yeah. Said, read what you got so far. That the U32 board recommends this draft budget for the consideration of the transition board. Yeah, yeah. just leave it at that. Okay. Yep. Yep. Honest, I second. So Carl, second. Okay. Discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. I'm, I'm sorry. I forgot to give you a piece of paper that I should have given you because it's because I, I, yeah. I've already seen you once in December. <laughs> it's true. I this piece of paper then, but I do now. And I just want you to have it so you see it. Um, some of you have seen it already, but it's a, um, a dashboard that we're using for looking at all budgets across the SU and the cost per equalized. Oh, you give me this one, Tash, right? I think you. Is, it, you the, is like, it the green and, and yellow? No. It's the other it, it's oh. this. Oh. Huh. I don't know. So let me hand it out. I've got, I, it's just because this is a second meeting, and I, I'm sorry if I forgot to do this. I gave you the green and, I gave you the green and yellow. Yes, you did give us yes. the green and yellow. Right and I think this, because this came out literally the Monday of Berlin's meeting, so we're a little ways from there. Right? I saw this in Yeah, you've seen it. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you. So this is, um, so what this is, is it gives the top table, yes, thank you, take a couple for money um, The top table is our figures from this current budget year for each school. Um, I'm gonna go through this quickly because I think all of you know this, but stop me if I'm going too fast. Uh, just gives you the expense budget the offsetting rev revenues, which then gets you to local education spending, which is the numerator in the tax rate formula. The denominator is the equalized pupils. So you can see for U32 right now, for this current fiscal year, it's 733. For then you see the, co the local ed spending for equalized people, which sets the tax rate. So you can see the variability across the, the District and one of the things I'm going to preempt a couple questions because I've been now through this one with a couple of boards. I'm not advocating for the same spending at all places because I think we should do it by student need. One of the works that I've been doing in my doctoral research is that the first thing a, a superintendent should really look at is 
keeping the priority of student learning at the top. The second is that we put resources where the needs are, not necessarily equal across the system. Um, and then it shows you some grants down below from C Consolidated Federal Programs and Medicaid revenues, and then how much of that would be in an e how much in addition would that be for equalized pupils? One that this conversation really started when we started thinking about Berlin. Berlin has mm -hmm. a little over two F 2.5 FTEs that they get in support uh, through federal mon money, so it's hard to really see some of the staffing that's in the local budget because it's outside the local budget. So then, this is all draft one, you're at draft three. But we, had, we have to keep this equal across. As soon as I finish with Calus tomorrow night, we'll republish this for all the budgets. Um, but you can see the, spend, the same thing, the spending. I'm gonna jump down to some of the highlights. U32 is down almost 10 equalized pupils this year. Your spending per equalized pupil is up about $800, $900. You're above, you're below the threshold by two hundred and eleven thousand dollars to get into the excess spending penalty. You'll see that three of your, uh, three of our schools, are there. There, those are in red. That's, while well, usually that means below, in most fiscal worlds, but it's above the threshold by that amount. Now I know that Doty and I know Calus tomorrow night because the budget that they're getting will bring them back into below the threshold. Doty just below. Cows will come down quite a bit if the board adopts what's recommended by Kat and myself. You'll see the penalty amount that those towns will have to raise in addition to. And then you'll see the tax rate based on taxes, based on the CLA from last year. So if we were to build the taxes based on individual districts, the town tax rates would be this. The next line is what's the education, the merged equalized tax rate for the whole district. So it's $1.79. And then taking last year's CLA, we'll change this once we get this year's CLA at the end of the month. What would be the tax rate with a merged system? And then you see the differentials. If it's in black, it's an increased cost. If it's in red, it's a decreased cost per hundred of assessed value. So that's just to give you some tax information. Usually by now I'm giving you tax information. Things mm -hmm. that have been really tough is that we're not, we're, the only figure we've received so far is what the dollar yield is from the state government. Every other number, we usually get a lot more numbers now by December 15th than we just haven't been getting from the state government. Mm -hmm. And that's due to their... They're doing the same thing. They, they just don't have the, they don't have, they're running behind, they don't have the personnel power to pull off what they need to pull off by statute. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a quick <laughs> overview on tax rates. Did um, <clears throat> is the loss of a small school grant factored into? It that? is under Calus and uh, and Doty, and that's really what put Doty into the penalty was the loss of school, small schools grant. They had been planning for that. They shifted some. They shifted money out of what they were putting into capital reserve for building for the, taking care of the building. Mm -hmm. And that was a plan they had made three years ago. Oh. They had planned on it. They said, let's see, they had a good, they had a year where their CLA was really positive, so they didn't lower their tax rate. They increased their amount to have, to build up their capital fund, but knowing that if they lost their small, small schools rent, that's where they would go to stay under the threshold. Uh, Calus, Calus has a double whammy. They lost only about 29, 25, 29, I could be off, somewhere in the 20,000 area, 20, 30,000 dollar area in their small schools grant, but they're losing $53,000 or their literacy interventionist that's paid for with federal grants. And the fact they're no longer have, their poverty has gotten lower, below the threshold that allows them to receive school-wide support for federal grants. So they lose that $53,000 and they put that position into the budget. They're going with budget redu with reductions, rifts tomorrow night in classroom teachers. The population at Calus will be down below 90 students in K through six next year at Calus. We're at 96, 98 right now. Calus is really, the projections for Calus and the projections for Middlesex are lowering students. But we're losing students, and, and quite rapidly. I mean, we're looking at Middlesex, Romney, 
uh, two years ago it was 165 students uh, pre-K through six and we're looking to be in the 127 to 130 area in two years. And so and Stephen gave you those numbers earlier where he showed you what kindergarten right now is 77 and you're graduating 123, that's coming. Right, I refer to a 1% decrease over time. This, um, where it says we're down 28, 27.94, and that's actually a 2% decrease in one year. So that drip, drip, drip is getting Louder. Louder. Yeah. Louder and faster. Is Rumney trying to get below that threshold spending? They they gave us when we asked for priorities from them the other night, their first priority was to reduce their transfer to their capital fund, another thirty thousand. Their second priority was to find anything we could in the budget, which I thought was ten or fifteen thousand dollars. And then they said the rest of it don't make personnel cuts and come to us with go above the threshold of spending is the direction the board gave us. So there'll be a, if with that in my estimate, we haven't done the work yet, but my estimate is that's about sixty to sixty five thousand. So they'll still be above it. Yeah. And is that because they're losing people so fast? Mm -hmm. No. The, the penalty is it's how the dollar. It's how the building is staffed. Mm -hmm. the, the penalty is a dollar. Yeah, for every dollar you have to raise that you need above the threshold. So if there's fifty thousand, you've got to raise a hundred, and fifty of that goes into the ed fund, and fifty of it goes to what you have over. Because this is a state. I mean, this is a statewide funding system, mm -hmm. and so I mean, there isn't a town in this district that raises enough education tax dollars to pay for the expenses that are being authorized by boards. So. Um, you know, when you look at all the, Berlin is the closest, we're about 95%. If you took a ratio of the education dollars raised in Berlin to the expense, it's about 95%. So we're to, all net benefactors. You're net benefactors. Yeah, from the system. Oh yeah, I mean, all the money goes to the state. You have the authority to set what the spending is and then the state gives us the money. That's a great piece of paper. Thank you. I, I know people are gonna be asking for this because this is something I anticipate, and I'm not doing it to get things equalized, but I think if you don't know the numbers, when you wanna have, one of the first things about equity, you know, we know about equity, I'm gonna to go to that sidebar, is you have to know what the numbers and the differences are. And so when, whether we're talking about racial equity or funding equity, we have to say, so what are the numbers? It doesn't mean they need to be the same, but you have to know what they are. And then you can have the conversation. And you know, someone, one board member assumed that, hey, they should be equal across. And I said, well, I wouldn't assume that. I actually think the transition board should have that discussion. <clears throat> should it be the same? That was that slide that you showed with the different height students. <clears throat> yeah. All getting the apple. Yeah. Well, well, you also, when you think about equalized pupil, too, is yeah. that it does cost more to educate a high school student than it does. Yeah, it, an elementary and, student. And the formulas look at that yeah. when, when they put it together. So if we go to an equalized, <coughs> if, if we had the same amount across, that would mean that, you know, a second, third grade student would have the same level of funding as a ninth yeah, or and, that, and that's been shown within Vermont across the nation that that yeah, it's higher cost at the high school level. Uh, and I can say that in the system that I was in where we were more like the merge system, we we had a multiplier for high school students that yeah. was slightly larger than the elementary school. Yeah. <clears throat> Questions? <coughs> Thank you. Act 46 update, <clears throat> excuse me, transition board membership. So we get to elect two members to the transition board. So can I pause you on that statement? No. Yes. You have the a choice point. to elect different members. If you do not do it, the clerk and the chair are automatically part of it. But you have the choice to okay. reaffirm that, to, to change it if you would like. And that was made at the last yep. November 28th board meeting. Does anybody have a strong opinion? I am happy to do it. I had assumed all along I was going to. Uh, we're talking three meetings. Well, 
I do struggle. <laughs> 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 Good try, Carl. Sorry, Carl, but it's probably, you know, best, especially in January from the 14th, there'll be, you know, I'm, as Michael's right to say, I'm making some assumptions, but I'm going to keep making them. That the 14th and the 16th of January will be meeting dates. We'll yeah, be in a yeah. meeting the next week. And then probably we'll want three meetings to talk about budget, so it means the last yeah. meeting in January and two in February. But that, I just want, I just want right. to right. transparent right. is yeah. what I can right. Right. forecast. I can't forecast everything. Um, and you're also doing negotiations, so are I'm you? Right. I'm, I'm, okay. You know, I'm glued to negotiations through the process. Yeah. I do not anticipate putting my hat in the ring come July for, you know, for, yeah. for the, for the yeah. new permanent board. So. so I'm willing to, I'm willing to serve. Is know. there anybody else chopping at the bit Unless to do it? Unless anybody's chopping at the bit to do it. I'm chopping at the bit, are you kidding? Well, I was just, uh, you know, you know. You know. So, let's so just do. I would move that we yeah. appoint Adrian and Carl to the transition board. A second? Second. Scott, any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're all set on that. Um, town report contents. Bill, yes. I'm going to pass that one off to you. Yep, I figured you were. <laughs> I figured you were. Um, so every, and I just do it for kind of uh, illustration, and you don't need to be able to read this. All you need to do is see that there are circles on this paper, and there are not very many of them. This is a list of everything that goes into the U32 annual report. As you'll see, it, you can't see it, but if you wanted to read it, you could. About two thirds of to three quarters is budget information and tax information for the next budget year. Since we're not there, I made a decision, and you can influence my decision, but I made it the other day, um, probably last week, that we would report in this year's reports, in the town, re in the school portion of the town report, we'll report on this current year and the last fiscal year. But we won't report on the next year because we don't have the budget. And some of, I think, what Michael was talking about is very appropriate. We don't have the authority. One of the things the transition board has talked about is how our annual reports sent out to the electorate. So how next year's budget? Will be yeah, presented. and then we have to put together next year's budget and all that. So um, that's when you see this whole list, and you've got there isn't one report in our system that's the same. That's why when I said trying to stop, like we're past it because we just can't make up the time in doing town reports now at this point. Because usually we're already making things for that January date right now. Um, so that piece, um, I wanted to, to let you know that, um, to let you know that we're trying to put together a way, we're, going, we're actually in publication right now. I know Stephen has his part he's working on probably over break of the part of the town report, the principal report, the board chair report, my report will be in there. I think a lot of my report will be about Act 46. Um, you know, that talks about what's, what's happening currently in U32. Um, and then we're producing uh, an academic report. We're still waiting for the state um, report card to finish this month. Um, because there's an online reporting that's supposed to take away all the school reports that were done by individual schools. Um, so once we have that, we're actually going to use that data and put it in to do a school report like we usually do that comes out before town meeting day, celebrating the great successes and areas we're working on. Um, I just don't have a data publication for you on that. So you are putting out an annual report. We have to put it, we have to do and, one. And it will be before town meeting or not? I just don't know. You right don't know. Now, Adrian. And do you want a board chair report in that? I want a board chair report for the for the town reports. Okay. We can help you with it as we have in other years. Yeah. Sometimes I wrote them myself and sometimes I got help. Yeah. And that probably needs to be done by January. I'll 23rd check, or something. I'll check a list. I'll have Krista. She and I, we, we've been saying for like a week we've got to really sit down and yeah. That something. it's something like it's January twenty something. I'm sure it's somewhere in her book somewhere yeah. that we have to have this conversation on that item. Okay. I'm trusting that it is. Other questions? 
discussion. Thank you for doing that. That's a lot. Of well, right now we're building a big project plan. That's the work to be done over Christmas break. That has because a lot of these have dependencies. So you do this thing usually here, but now you don't. So what's that do to other processes during the year that we've had this kind of? We didn't even have to have it when we had checklists, but we didn't really need them. Right now it's it's not dropping. So future meeting schedule and content. So I wanted to ask this of you. This is an item that I put on, Adrian, that, that you know. Um, I just want to say you usually meet the first Wednesday of every month. Uh, I'm going to kind of blend 3, 4, and 3, 5 here. Um, you know, you've got board meetings on uh, we need you to be operational. You're the oper you have the operational authority through June 30th, 2019. So this board is um, has the responsibility and authority for U32 for the operations till then. That means that, you know, what does that mean? What's the minimum you have to do? And I'm not saying you can't do more. I just want you to know what the minimum. We need you to approve board orders and if there's a student or staff hearing. Um, I thought it'd be good for you guys, for all of you to have a discussion about what does that mean for what we want to accomplish here as a board? Um, we'll need you to, we need, we need to have, right now, um, there are only three of you that are going on as board members because four of you are up for election this March. This board needs to be seated through December 2019 because after June 30th, one of the things we need this board to do is to approve the audit. If, it goes, if the audit is not delivered by then, the way the draft articles read is that authority then will go to the new board. Um, but we, we know we'll have the audits done, and our auditor already knows that there's a timeline to get this done. Um, Who's up for re-election? I am. I don't think it's four of us. I thought it. I think we did see that it was four. Is Jonathan? Because you're up, right? And I Could we go? That's why I'm asking. I think Jonathan is, because he's got the monitor. Right. I, I thought we, we... I definitely am up. So Kari's up. Yeah. Kari's up. George, you're up. Well, Adrian's up. You're, and you filled up. Time flies. You filled up. So it's not you filled, you filled a, a, a point you were appointed in 2016. So that. I don't think so. I, I think I ran again. I was actually on the ballot. What was it? Two, Last year. Yeah, was it a one year left of a term? I don't believe so. I think I finished out the term. So can you check with Rosemary? Sure. Yeah. Yep. It'd be, Are you planning it'd be great on if you're not up for it? Yeah. For the sport? <laughs> yeah, that's my current plan. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I will definitely run for yeah. this board to yeah. see it through. Did you say you were going to That's my plan. run to stay on this we're, board? We're anticipating moving, and I just don't know my timeline, but I think that I can serve out at least in July. I mean, I, I guess like, that would be my caveat. Would, if I move this summer, would that would that not be well? If we beneficial? all we need is a quorum. All you need is four to approve that. Yeah, yeah, we need four. The audit. We need yeah. four. Yeah. Um, so that makes sense to folks. If I yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we need to keep. So that's a piece that I wanted to to talk to you all about, um, and just you know we're still I'm still planning on first of the first Wednesdays of the month meetings for this board. Um, I may or may not be at meetings to come. This may be one of my last meetings with you, just because I've got to start making decisions about work that I've got to do. Um, I'll be here with you. Steve will be here. Uh, to the bitter end, I'm with you guys. <laughs> so we're, I, we, I feel like a lame duck. <laughs> um, would it be an operational challenge if we didn't meet in January? So, Since that's two school days from now, right? Basically. So operationally, no. I mean, no, no. We had you. You have a motion that puts in place for covering of board orders. That's not a big deal. So that's why I was trying to tell you the minimum for operation are the things I just told you. I'm yeah. not trying to stop you yeah. from doing things. I'm right. just trying to tell you what you have, what we need you to do as a board for an operational board. I just say that because there's a lot going on in January. Yeah. I mean, personally, I'm going to a lot of different school board things. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't sound like, I, we literally have Thursday and Friday, 
and then we come back to school, that would be our meeting on Wednesday. Right. So that, unless there's something we have to do that meeting. We will do our best to make sure that you don't need hearings. Um, and, and we'll just wait and for the hearing that until we'll, we meet. That's your choice to make. Yeah. Your choice to make. So does that seem reasonable to folks who yeah. take January off? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so that it would be, was it supposed to be? January 2nd. January 2nd. Yes, there would be We're zero school issues. Well, well, there's tomorrow and Friday. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and that's a school day, too. That's a school day, too. <laughs> that so day, yeah, yeah. Trouble could happen that day. You're right. that, that's a school well, day. I'm not worried. So your, your, your next, if you didn't do that, your next meeting would be February 6th. And then there's a carousel that month, but I think because you didn't meet on January, yeah, it would probably happen. good for you to meet. There would be there's a carousel plan for the twentieth. And I sort of feel like if we don't meet, I mean we're kind of in a void, right? There won't be any board overseeing you thirty two. Uh, I disagree with that. Mm -hmm. Well, there'll be a transitional board, but, but they don't have oversight. They do. The transitional board only has three powers. Right. They can call for they can call for two different types of election which are two of the powers one if the if an articles of agreement committee produces a set of articles they must warrant for an election to approve those and the second one is to determine a method as michael was saying for uh how we will have candidates run for the new board right. well that's what third, i mean the third is to recommend a budget to the new board so they're not concerned generally with U32. Right, they're not doing the operational. Yeah. Right. And so that's, that's why I was very careful to say you have operational authority to June 30th, 2019. Yeah. Right. And I, I think and we so should we have carry on mm -hmm. until yeah. there's another board yeah. that is going to kind of yeah. take over the vision and all of U32. Yeah. Exactly. Are people in agreement yes. with that? Yeah. And Sorry, then, Stephen. Um, we're not going to let you loose. <laughs> should, should we plan for a legislature? Yeah, we're happy with this, right? Yeah. Right. That would, oh, in February. That would be that February one. Right? February six, the legislature legislators come. Sure. I I would think people have something to say to their legislators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that challenging for you guys? I'm going to ask for Adrian and some support from you as a board to put it together because the person that I have doing most of the work. I'm being very, well, if, you, if you give me the email, I'll get you. I'll get you to. Yeah, I can do that. She's a little swamped right now. Krista, is that Krista? And, yeah. Um, and I'm happy to. Help I, you know, um, yeah, it really, it's just an email. I would just offer okay. too that um, Leslie can help support this board yeah. as we close out the work that's here, where where we did move a lot of things over to Krista, but in the the amount of work. Leslie is very capable. She knows she how to was, do this. She's yeah. incredible. So, she's right. Let's let Leslie do it. So, yeah, that's so, a great idea. So I mean, there's coordination of the whole. There's a little. There's internal coordination that has to be done. Yeah, that's a really nice offer. Well, I, and I mean, it's she's it's not okay. here. Yeah. <laughs> well, she did that very capably for Correct. very many. Correct. Correct. I mean, it was just yeah. in some of the restructuring, but she yeah. can. But in this time, I mean. <laughs> We're, we're all we're all doing some things we never thought we'd right. be doing. Yeah. So okay. So legislators. Yeah, I get And I think we start them at six thirty or seven. I can't. They really like to start either six thirty or seven because they usually have caucuses on. Wednesday yeah. So we can do our public. We can meet at six and they come in at seven. Yeah. Okay. So I'll let you guys figure out the timing of that. Let Leslie do that. Um, Before we move on, can I just go back to I would, yeah, the ahead. Articles Committee? Yeah. So I just wanted to update folks. I'm, I sit on this Articles of Agreement Committee that's going to morph into the 706B Committee that will be recommending um, the new Articles Association. And it's not clear to me that we're going to be able to complete our work, actually, as of this morning. We spent a few hours um, and we're really wrestling with we, I think we have a, a few options. One is to just present the default, which in fact there would be no reason to, to vote on those because those are the default. Um, um, we can do a def, um, default with certain amendments. Um, or, but, but the way we present those amendments is very complicated, or could be very complicated, depending on what we want to take on. And so um, 
we are, we are wrestling with how, what we present and how we present it. And we're just a group of six people currently. We're about to be a group of 11 and it could get even more complex. And, and there's been new issues raised just in the last 24 hours. So I just wanted to share with you that uh, while I thought things were moving along and we would be able to wrap up our work, it's not clear to me that we will. And we have to have a public hearing on January 9th. Well, that's the date I said. It doesn't have to be that. I'm just trying to, I'm literally, like, have a big calendar going in my office right now that I went back to paper, which was hard to do for me. Um, and because uh, it's just a chessboard. I mean, it really is. You move one thing here, and it's like, and I'm I cascade all the way out to June, and it's, you know, well, things just move, they shift. Talk, talk about assumptions. We don't even know the Berlin membership of the new 76. They haven't met, they haven't, we have no idea who they're going to appoint. So in terms of scheduling meetings with that committee and then the hearing that needs to follow, it's kind of a leap of faith at this point. And do they have to appoint someone? Yes. yes. They, they, need, they need to appoint at least one board member and two community members. And we can't, we're having a hard time scheduling a meeting for the Berlin board right now. Stay tuned. Okay, thanks. Um, so future meeting schedule and content. Yeah, I mean, and I you, think you, you did it. You did it. You yeah, did it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I just wanted to get all that out. Yeah. I just, I'm okay. trying to be as transparent. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. And, and I hope you uh, take any private feedback about my video or praise in, in, on the camera. Uh, but I'm trying to do those videos like every week. I, I already know three things I'm going to say at the end of this week. We might be just filmed with my phone. <clears throat> hey, folks, here are three new things I know about Act 46 in the merger process. And just put them up there. Communication is greatly appreciated. It's just, just it's, and it, it's frankly, the video is the fastest and easiest way for me to do it. And um, <laughs> people are getting more and more lenient with what they, you know, the, how formal a video needs to be. Yeah. Just build talk it. You can't compete with PewDiePie. I understand. I, I don't want to. I don't want to go. I'd rather watch Bill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, reports to the board. Central Vermont Career Center. <clears throat> Excuse me. You, you heard my little bit. They came down some on their tuition. Yay. Do um, you think that was because of pressure from you guys? I would like to think so. Um, so, not much else to report from them. Student reps are otherwise occupied this evening. Yes, they are. Will they you they let them know we're not meeting in January? I will fill them in. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't want them to show up. Yeah. Administration report. <laughs> You've got a lot of it. <laughs> well, school's, the school's still running, um, no matter actually, what. I actually would say things are running really well. Yeah, actually, we are doing really well. I mean, I, 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 I think that. Unless, like, unless you, unless, you know, I said to Stephen jokingly yesterday, I said, stop, don't protect me, though. I'm overwhelmed right now. But, and I want to know if something's going on, but I don't. I see good things every time I'm over here. Yeah, we're, you know, the, the work that we're doing around, so I, I think this would encapsulate a lot of it. So one, one of the conversations that we've had uh, recently is that, um, you know, as our sophomore, or as our juniors are moving through this year, they, um, we're starting to see, okay, where are their places within the curriculum that they have not had an opportunity to demonstrate the proficiencies that we find are important. Um, so all those standards that we adopted, the work that we did around them. A very good example, um, and we've, we've brought this to attention before, is engineering in science. Another um, one is um, economics within uh, global citizenship. Um, statistics within math. Um, and the conversation that we're, we're having around those are, so we want to provide as many opportunities as we can. We realize that those opportunities may not be as robust as we would want. But what we really see is that this is an important part of our curriculum that wasn't there, right? And so because we have now created these proficiencies and said that these are important, we can really identify where were we not serving our students as well as we should. And so, um, so those discussions are now happening as to how does this, how do we get this? How do we make sure that kids have this? And it's not just simply one department saying, oh my God, what do we do? Like this has been a discussion across departments. Department heads are like, well, what about this? Or what about this? Or you know, how can we start to create new opportunities for 
for some of these proficiencies to be done in multiple classrooms. And, um, and you're starting to see evidence of it. And um, we have a climate change unit that's going on in the um, ninth grade team that the social studies uh, teachers and the science teachers are pretty much running the project between the two classes so that there are the policy implications, the government implications, all of those, while the science teachers are working on the, um, the scientific facts, the, the reports that are put out. And, and so they're really starting to, um, to come together to make sure that those proficiencies are done. And so it's, it's, the work is there. You know, and, and those conversations are no longer so isolated as one department is responsible for this. You know, reading is starting to be talked about school-wide. Our math goals, you know, the science teachers are saying, you know, well, what does this mean for us? Like, how do we make sure that the kids are doing it? And so, you know, we put a lot of work into putting proficiencies in the student learning outcomes and the work that you guys did to it. And it's filtering down now, you know, to those lower, to the classroom level. Where, where you want to see it happening. And so it's, it's been nice. It's, it, it's, it's kind of a wake-up call. I, I will say one of the teachers the other day said, you know, I feel really responsible for making sure that every kid meets this. And we would hate to think that in the past that, that there were kids that we let slip by, but there were kids who got Ds, right? And we were okay with that at one point in time, and we're not okay with it anymore. <laughs> We really are not okay with it, and uh, and so that's a great level of rigor and um, that that we've all hoped for, and hopefully address some of those issues that were brought up in the middle part of the presentation. You know, preparing people so that they, you know, what I saw in that was that it was no high school or only high school education yes. is yeah. the part that scared scares me. Exactly. And if we prepare kids to be successful beyond <laughs> high school, then we've done them a great service. I, I think our teachers are really focused on that right now. Okay. Yeah. Curious what the um, what's the engagement like around the math proficiency goal, and is there discussion of a literacy goal yet? In so this, this goal? I would I would say that we were probably talking more about the literacy one prior to the math one, okay. um, but we we hadn't really set a full goal. I actually. I, 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 just my stuff that I could look at while you guys are debating things. Um, but it was some of the work that's being done with our students. These are the students that are in our READ 180 program. And this was their recent uh, growth reports in, you know, that we, we get from that. You know, we're, we want to see the same kind of performance out of literacy. And we really are closing the gap. One of the biggest numbers that I saw today was a hundred point gain on the Lexile score is a, a little more than a grade level by the time you get to, um, to eighth to ninth grade. And um, our ninth graders in the Read 180 program had a 97 point gain in half a year. All right. And wow. then our eighth graders had a 47 point average gain. And our um, seventh graders only had a 17 point average gain, but in a half a year, a lot of that can be attributed, they just got here. Mm -hmm. And so, but we see the program, like it, ex it just looking at the averages, it accelerates pretty well for our kids. And we're starting to see a lot more kids. Our graph used to have a lot more red in it that was bad, but there's a lot more green. And, um, and so it's starting to, we're starting to see good results from our kids and the work that we're focused on making sure that they can read and read well. And so, yeah, we're just collecting the winner benchmark across the issue. We were working on that Tuesday at the leadership meeting. Yeah. Oh, boy, yeah, where are <coughs> benchmarks? Tell us about that. So, more to come. Good. Yeah. Good. Finance. Do we need uh, No, more? nothing to report. No. Executive committee. I don't think you've met, right? Nothing to report. Policy committee hasn't met. School quality hasn't met. Negotiations. I think we've met since we met. Okay. We don't meet again until after the holidays. So we need a motion to approve the Winooski Valley Statewide Choice Agreement for 2019-20. And I assume it's the same agreement we've... We use the same agreement before, which is... Uh, ten kids in ten, and out? Ten, ten kids in and out per grade. Yeah. And we always get ten coming oh, in. Oh, absolutely. The list is long. Yeah. So is there a motion to accept that agreement? So moved. Carl, in a second. A second. Scott? 
Any discussion about that? That won't change with Act 46, will it? Don't ask that question. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Believe me, actually, there was a debate Post. Monday at the superintendent's meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I said oh, I'm doing geez. it with the board that's sitting in control of the high school right now. That was my decision. Mm -hmm. I'll take the lumps either way. Um, a motion to accept the audit report that we received via email. I'll move that. Okay. Kari, in a second. <laughs> I'll second. Karen, do people have questions or comments about it? Did I see an email from you at some point? It's a daunting document. There's a lot there. Um, that, uh, was, that was a separate thing. The okay. You had sent me a bunch of stuff. Okay, okay. Yeah, which I was very grateful for, especially now knowing how much, you know, She's got in her plate. I'd actually told her not to do it. She said, I'll get to it when I do. Well, it's not because of you, Scott. It was I, I know. I, I have to select. No, I, I understand. But I, I greatly appreciate it. If it. Uh, a couple questions. Yeah. One is um, at, the, at the very end, they go to great lengths to tell us that they evaluate internal controls, but not in order to render an opinion about the effectiveness of those internal controls. It's classic auditor language, I but um, you got to love my it. question. Well, they do. They tell us, and some of it they tell us it doesn't get in that report. There were some suggestions that were put in place. And I, yeah. If good. you ask me what they are, and I, I don't even remember because yeah. we did. My, but my question it. is, how common is it to actually have an audit evaluate the effectiveness of internal controls it's not for schools? It's, it's not something that happens very often. Well, the feds actually do pretty tightly on us, and they be <laughs> correct because when we move into a merged system. Our audit practice is going to change because we're going to be more than one system with a greater. We go above the threshold of federal money we use in one merge system, so the audit's going to have to change a little bit because mm -hmm. the federal. We have to report directly to the feds through our auditor for those internal controls that you're talking okay. about. So, so perhaps they'll provide more comment <laughs> <laughs> or just more accountees. I think it's going to be more accountees for the office of for OMB. Okay. At the federal level. Well, so that actually was my second question, just to confirm that when we're a unified district, if and when we're a unified, we'll save money on the audit, be more efficient to produce one document rather than six. I would like to hope so. I don't know. I don't know the really answer. <laughs> Lawyers told me yes, it would be less, I and mean, she's told me that since like three or four years you, ago. We won't know for sure until. We but get. I haven't gone and asked for a price quote. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All those in favor of accepting the audit, say aye. 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 Opposed? So a year from now, we're going to be doing that as the final thing. Yeah. Right? Well, you'll do It'll two be things. You'll do that and dissolve the board. It'll be a really quick meeting. <laughs> um, a motion to approve the um, school quality committee recommendation for this SU-wide goal related to student learning, related to literacy, right? to set literacy goals. No, I think this is the whole thing that they had said that they said in the SU meeting. This is, remember, if you remember the, the conversation at the supervisory I meeting. I do. Yeah. So or three. Should, should we all Oh, okay. That's right. It wasn't we just. all adopt the math, ask for a comparable literacy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for the, the bigger picture. <laughs> a little blurry right now. But. There was one more. Yeah. Can look it up? <laughs> it's okay. No. It's okay. So is there a motion to approve the and it's kind of interesting because it's already our goal, right? Haven't we adopted goals that have this? Uh, you know, not. I don't we have it's a close. student learning goal, yeah. so we can change our U32 goal to match this goal. Oh, uh, the third part was a call for some formal review of how it went. A reflection of the teacher reflection of teachers. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Do we? Did no. Yeah, you didn't. I didn't get. I didn't get a motion. No, I am no. sorry. A motion. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. So moved. And a second. Second. George, more discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. <coughs> Appoint a representative to the Articles of Agreement Committee. So can I talk about this before? You yes, you it? certainly may. So. Um, there are two different groups. There's the Articles Agreement Committee and that Kari's been part of that has representation from all six boards. 
And I said in the SU meeting, I thought that there we could do it with, um, that we could keep that small group because they've been working well, and I, um, because of the way 46 language is structured. After conferring with Chris Leopold, our attorney, he received an email from me last week that says that the towns need to appoint people to the Act 49. That's not what this is. This is the group that Kari's been part of. And Matthew suggested that everyone reaffirm that he's on it. I also know, and I hope you've heard already, I just haven't had a chance to tell you, Kari, that Monday night, East Montpelier appointed you to be part of this <laughs> membership for them through 706. Because they said, Kari, should, right. he's an East Montpelier resident, he should help us, he's been working on it. And I was supposed to get to you, and I didn't, so I apologize. <laughs> After Monday night, I'll yes. tell so, Kari. So U32 oh. doesn't need to do anything? They need to have, just appoint you to this current articles, the, the one we have going that you sat on oh, today. Huh. It's sort of semi and then Which is we almost sat, done. It's almost done. We set one more meeting. Didn't we do that last time? I thought we did that. Did you do that? Because we were in the carousel. Right. Did you come in here and do that? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I we think did. we formally yeah, we, did. I, I thought uh, yes, we, we did both of them. So then, yeah. you're, so then you're done. I'm that one is not needed. I'm okay. sorry. There, I, I remember walking after the carousel meeting. Right yes, and we did. Put, put all these things on all the agendas. No, we did it. We approved okay. the yeah, membership. We met after the carousel okay, meeting. So you don't yeah. need we that. Do that. But just okay. so you know, the towns are appointing their membership and it needs to be proportional because when you read the final language in Act 49, it says in the same manner and method. So which towns have already done that? Um, all but Berlin and Callis. Callis will do it tomorrow night, and Berlin is the one we're trying to get finished. And so who did, what, can you tell us? Matthew who? is on for Worcester, and tonight Rumney was going, uh, no, they put, for the articles, it's Chris and Brian, and for East Montpelier, it's Floor and Darcy, Darcy. and Carr. Maybe that was in the paper. I read that. Was one. It? That was in the paper this morning. Yeah, yeah. and then Callis is meeting tomorrow night, and they need two folks. Okay. Um, is he going to be one? I, I don't know. I, I, I know they have to have one board member, and Dorothy's been part of it. What we're trying to do is keep the people that were on this committee right. yep. to because they have knowledge of how it's pulled together. Right. See, okay, the I just wanted to know. Yeah. And then we the don't need. Time. Oh, we appointed members to the transition board yes, already. Do, right? yeah, so I we need a motion to, uh, do you want to tell us the motion for this? So um, so just a quick piece so that you understand what we're, what we're saying is that at the last meeting you approved the pre-qualification criteria for companies um, to um, do the track project. Um, so we put out these pre-qualifications. Um, Yesterday, those were due, and Bill Ford, John, John Himmelgarn, David Hannigan, our building and grounds director, Kevin Warden, who's from Engineering Ventures, and myself met to review those. Um, mm -hmm. Of the companies that, uh, that gave us a, uh, uh, all the information to address the, the pre-qualifications, we, we recommend that you pre-approve five companies to do the project, and we think that's a good cross-section. So uh, those five companies, if you want to see the full piece of this in the board Google Drive, uh, do, and I think you guys, do they have access? No, to they it? cannot have access to it as a board. Boards cannot share things through Google. That sounds exactly right. Um, <laughs> I, go, go complain to the legislature. The Senate stopped it last time we tried to get it through. If you have questions about these, I can answer, but we have five companies who will recognize. Yeah, here are the quick. names uh, Capital Earth Moving, Jay Hutchins, I'll give, and I'll get all these to you Du Bois Construction, EF Wall and Associates, and Engineers Construction Inc. Those five companies met all the requirements. We did um, some reference checks on them. Uh, John Himmelgarn and Kevin Warden have worked with, with most of these companies extensively. Um, and so these five companies are the ones we submit for pre-approval. And once you pre-approve these, just so you know, these five will have the option to bid on the track project. Whoever submits the lowest bid will win, unless they're within 1%. And then how many submitted a bid or a proposal? Six. Okay. 
six companies submitted for uh, pre-approval. And did you judge that the sixth one didn't meet? The didn't have the capacity to okay. do this job. Okay. So I'll move so that we accept that recommendation. I'll second. Carl, discuss, any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> that motion carries. A motion to approve the board orders. So moved. Karen, a second. Did you get the amount, Lisa? No. I'll give it to oh, you. Oh, I'm sorry. I sent them back. Sorry. Were there any questions on them? No. Did we get a second here? I'll second. George? In the amount of $65,542.73. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? That motion carries. Future agenda items. For February, we got legislators. Yes, yes. That's good. Yes. Go from there. Board communication. I think we're good for a while. I think so. Yeah. I think not so. Yep. Um, we so we need to move up. in. <laughs> 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 we need to move back into executive session to yes. address that. Um, so I'll move that we move back into executive session. Executive session. So Kari and Carl. And Carl, if you just give Lisa those initial notes from the beginning, okay, she can. Then you don't have to give them. And you might want to. Let's just take a five-minute break.